Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that we're going to talk about this Sunday is the letter that I referenced in yesterday's video. I meant to do it last night, but I'll be honest, I got sidetracked family stuff. But this is an important thing, because what I'm about to show you is a letter that a bunch of senators who signed the Safer or the Senate Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the Gun Control Act that Biden just signed last year, this whole letter is all about archery, and they're very upset and up in arms that the education or the uh, the uh, Secretary of Education would dare take the context of the law out of context and penalize any type of archery hunting programs. Well, I'm going to read you this letter. This was submitted on September 5th. Then I'm going to show you who actually signed it. Democrats, Republicans, you'll love this. And then I'm going to tell you what they haven't sent a letter on yet. Let's get into it. As to not waste time, check this out. Coming from the illustrious office of Senator John Corner from Texas, the architect of this, by the way. Let's keep going. To Honorable Miguel Cardona, Secretary of the Department of Education, this was sent on September 5th, 2023, again from John Cornyn's office. Unfortunately, and contrary to congressional intent, the Department of Education has misinterpreted the language to exclude certain educational activities from re receiving federal resources. Now, this is going, again, on the re basically removal of education and funding for archery and hunter hunting programs in schools. Okay? Specifically, Section 13401 amended Section 8526 of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965 to add a new prohibited use of federal funds provided under the ESEA. The intent of the section was to preclude these funds from being used to purchase dangerous weapons for school staff or to train school staff in use of dangerous weapons. That was the whole thing. They basically cut funding because they wanted to get in front of any idea that guns would be anywhere near education for schools. That was the whole idea. Well, archery got caught up into it. Well, this really got in the problem of those that are politically in vulnerable positions. Let me continue again. Let me show you who signed this. In implementing Section 13401, the department issued guidance that contradicts congressional intent. The department's interpretation has sparked concerns from district and state leaders that ESEA funds may no longer be used to support archery, hunter safe, safety education, and other extracurricular activities or programs. We understand the department has encouraged local and state education agencies to seek alternative sources of funding for archery and hunting educational enrichment programs. This is concerning because of the important role these enrichment programs can play in students' lives. Archery is an inclusive extracurricular activity that empowers students from all backgrounds to learn sport and compete. Hunter safety classes and programs play an important role in teaching safety, wildlife management, landowner relations, and personal responsibility of students. Okay, we're getting to the point where I'm going to bring up a real ironic piece. Now, we ask the department to interpret the language as Congress intended and no longer ask educational entities to seek other sources of funding outside of the ESEA, supporting all this stuff. It is our hope the department will rethink its latest guidance and threatens to students' access to these programs. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something that hasn't been sent a letter from this exact same um, piece of legislation. For example, John Cornyn didn't get a letter together with everyone signing about uh, 18 to 20 year olds mandatory 10 day waiting periods anytime he purchases a gun anywhere in the United States because you're 18 to 20, which is discriminatory on a group base alone. So haven't seen a letter on that one. I also haven't seen a letter on the red, uh, the red flag law bribery that was supposed to include due process. And Tom Tillis, Republican North Carolina, got up on his high horse and was pounding his chest that he got those due process protections. Yeah, they ignored that, gave money anyway. Haven't seen a letter on that one. And then finally, I haven't seen a letter on who is now considered a dealer with the new ATF rule coming down. I haven't seen a letter on those three things, but oh man, did we see a letter real quick around archery programs and funding in schools? Well, you know what? Maybe this is just a far right Republican thing. N no, let me show you who signed this. Let's just go down the list. John Cornyn, architect of this entire thing. Kirsten Cinema, independent from Arizona, also uh, signed this bad boy. She was included in drafting this legislation. Tom Tillis, drafting this legislation, Republican from North Carolina. Oh, let's see. Some other ones that I really like. Let's get to this. Oh, Rhino Central. Susan Collins. Well, good job, Susan. You signed on to this. Um, let's see. Mitt Romney. Oh, Rhino. 
Martin Heinrich, he's from New Mexico. He's in a little bit of uncomfortable position right now with the whole governor's shenanigans. Amy Klobuchar, she's a Democrat from a state that heavily favors hunting. Mm, awkward. Lisa Murkowski, ooh, ooh, Alaska rhino. Then we've got Joni Ernst. Joni Ernst also signed this. I can't remember exactly which state she's from top of my head. I believe it's Iowa. It might be Indiana. I'm pretty sure it's Iowa, though. Mark Kelly, husband to Gabby Giffords, Giffords.org. Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, a treat among treat for rhinos. And Joe Manchin, who is trying to save his job. Okay, well, I got one more. Let's see if I squeeze anybody else in. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't. We're good. So now the original question. When have you seen the letters going from John Cornyn's office, who wrote this entire thing with Chris Murphy and Tom Tillis and Kirsten Cinema, going about any about of the um, other topics that I just brought forward? Um, you haven't. So that begs the question, why? If it was all about congressional intent being misinterpreted, which is all the requirements that happened in the 18 to 20-year-olds, the red flag bribery, and who is considered a dealer, because that's all outside of the purview of that law, Begs the question why you didn't send a letter about those things. Unless you did, and I'm opening the door for the future because you could. But I haven't seen one yet. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I will see you on the next one, and thank you so much for watching.